There has been a lot going on in the AI world, and I can't really keep up with all of it, so I'm just going to go over some things I'm looking at, what I'm interested in, and some things I, I want to look at. So, first things first, um, Audiobook Maker. This is my program that I'm creating, um, and you can use this to basically read out any audiobook to you uh, with these AI voices. And if you want to keep up to date with what I'm working on, I have a change log where you can read all of the changes I'm doing, um, features I'm adding, so on and so forth. I recently added a find and replace feature that allows you to look for words to replace in a text file that you update. But yeah, if you want to keep up to date, you can check this out here. Don't want to make my channel just audiobook maker. And so we're just going to quickly skip through that. Now, some other things that I've been working on is training GPT Sovits um, and just training some voice models. I've kind of fallen behind on training as many models as I, as I want, but I'm getting back into the swing of things here. Um, but one thing I was running into is like accuracy of transcriptions with words from like podcasts or speeches, uh, because when we're speaking, you have um, disfluencies like um, like ums and uh, and things like that to where it's not completely fluid speech so thought i would share this with you guys in case um any of you all might find this interesting so i've got this little whisper x audio demo here and i'm going to record some audio with disfluency so here we go hey like um yeah that was like a, a great thing and uh we're gonna be done with that so stop that recording there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to transcribe it without this initial prompt. So we're going to run that. Now, I had known that you can prompt whisper, but I didn't know you could do it for um, improving the output. I thought you had to fine tune the model instead. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So once this finishes, um, we'll take a look. And this actually looks pretty good. Uh, let's take a listen to the audio real quick. Hey, like, um, yeah, that was like a, a great thing. And uh, we're going to be done with that. OK, so that was quite correct, but that's nor not normally how the output comes out. So, OK, so I recorded a different sample so that uh, we could see kind of what's happening here. All right. So here we go. We've got the sample. Here is the audio that I recorded. Yeah, so that's how we're going to um, do it, and that's going to be pretty much it. So see you guys later. So as you can tell, it's missing the quick little um that I have in there, the disfluency. So we're going to now use initial prompt, transcribe. And now you can see it includes that. So let's take a listen with this new transcription. Yeah, so that's how we're going to um, do it, and that's going to be pretty much it. So see you guys later. All right, and so as you can tell, it has that um in there with these ellipses, and that allows me to create data uh, data sets that are more accurate to speech, because what ends up happening is if you don't have these disfluencies inside of your training data, what's going to happen is if you have these text audio pairs, it's not going to know uh, what exactly the audio is associated with at these areas where it's like um. So you're going to have a uh, lower quality data set. So this is necessary for that. So I thought this was very interesting. You can prompt it to do other things such as um, capitalize certain words and all of that stuff. So if any of you guys find that interesting, you can read more up on it right here with this OpenAI cookbook where they go through some of the, uh, the kind of the concepts behind it. And yeah, so that's Whisper. So finding new things about Whisper is always fun. And then, yeah, like I said, training GPT Sovits right now just to see how um, how good the models are. I'm particularly interested in GPT Sovits. I really like the outputs from GPT Sovits. Um, it's fast and it sounds pretty good. Now, I will be making a follow up or not a follow up, but a video for 2025 where I go over some of the best models for 2025 in open source speech. And um, to do that, I'm going to be using some of the models from this TTS arena. And if you aren't aware of what this TTS arena is, you can basically vote on different models to um, to, uh, to kind of choose what uh, sounds the best. So I have this sentence right here uh, that I'm just trying out with the generation. It's supposed to be kind of more like a blunt, angry type of speech. 
So I have this here. What you can do is you can listen to left side and right side and vote which is better. So we'll take a listen in real time and see which one we we find better. Don't be freaking stupid. This code is absolute trash. You'd have been better off having a monkey smash their heads against the keyboard and a better program would have come out instead. What a waste of time. Don't be freaking stupid. This code is absolute trash. You'd have been better off having a monkey smash their heads against the keyboard and a better program would have come out instead. What a waste of time. All right, so I don't know about you guys, but B is definitely better in this case. Um, and so, wow, who would have guessed 11 labs? And so that's where these um, ELO ratings comes from, this, this win rate. So you've got 11 labs on top, play HT, but those are proprietary ones. If we go into open source, high proprietary models, um, we can now see kind of what the ranking looks like in the open source community. So we've got Fish Speech, which I'm going to be going over in a future video. Um, we've got Kokoro, um, which is from uh, one of my Discord members. So their model is actually popping off. I think their model sounds really good. And you can get this downloaded and ran locally. And this one has several different voices and languages. And it's a very small model, so it's very fast. Now uh, they've reproduced the infamous Sky Voice, if you want uh, the Sky Voice once again. But I think Kokoro is pretty cool. XTTS um, is still up here. Style TTS. Then you got Meta Voice. So those are your top five in the TTS arena. And then uh, you've got some other ones down in here. I personally think Parlor TTS, some samples I've heard from Parlor TTS, uh, should put it at the top in terms of the the upper bounds of what type of uh, speech a language model can generate. However, it's just very hard. One of my Discord members has shown some pretty interesting examples with Parlor TTS. Um, I haven't particularly gotten this one fully trained yet. I was trying to uh, do that this week, but but didn't have enough time to, to go through it as I think I have to do it in WSL2. And we've got fish speech down here. And the GPT Soviets is like ranked number 15. But I really like it. So I'm just kind of biased there. And then all these other ones. Um, you know, I haven't really looked at several of these. But as you can see, it's kind of like a ranking. So if you want to know open source uh, TTS models, they can be submitted here. And you can kind of keep track of who's in uh, this, this benchmark. And then you also kind of have this other uh, arena as well by, Pend by Pendracar. And you can see the leaderboard here as well. You got Style TTS at the top. You got Edge TTS, XTTS, Meta Voice, Parler, Fish, Speech, GPT, Soviets, V2. All of these models, I believe, are open source except for um, except for this one, Edge TTS, I think. And you can see that there are different um, models in here, but still pretty much the same ones are at the top of the leaderboard there. So yeah, long story short, I'll be making a video where I install all of these locally just to kind of give you guys some demonstrations on how these ones sound. Um, I would like to be able to train all of them, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to train all of them. But if you want to get my opinion on some of these, um, like I said, I think Parler TTS should be closer to the top uh, in terms of upper bounds. But uh, I still need to train it just to kind of demonstrate that. And then... Um, I would say, yeah, Fish Speech 1.5 sounds pretty good. Kokoro sounds really good. XTTS is good. Um, this is kind of like XTTS slash Tortoise, I would assume. But XTTS has better sounding native outputs compared to Tortoise. Tortoise, you need to pipeline with IBC. Um, and then, of course, yeah, Style TTS, I would agree. And then uh, GPT Soviets way down here. But um, that that would kind of be my my top five of uh, TTS solutions I would use locally. Oh, wait. And then it's missing F5 TTS. I don't know where F5 TTS is in here. Um, I do think that F5 is is should be pretty high. But because I find that F5 TTS is, um, is pretty good. But yeah, you got Mask GCT, which is kind of like F5. And you got F5 TTS in the other one. So a little bit lower. But um, so... You know, the people have spoken, so F5 might not be at the top. I personally really like it, though. All right. And then some other things. Um, well, I guess let me show you some samples uh, for GPT Soviets. Here, I'm, let me change this so I don't get... And then um, we'll start inf inference on this. So this is a model that I've been training for kind of my Vivi um, Neurosama model. And I'm just trying to create a voice. 
So this is what I kind of have right here. So we'll take a listen. Don't be freaking stupid. This code is absolute trash. You'd have been better off having a monkey smash their heads against the keyboard and a better program would have come out instead. What a waste of time. So there is a uh, quick inference on it. And in terms of quality, it's a little bit lower fidelity than some of the other models we just heard. But in terms of expression for, let's say, like, um, I don't know what you would call them, um, like laughter or like size, it gets those decently well. So um, this reference audio right here is actually AI generated from the own from its own model. And so we can take a listen to this reference audio sample here. <sighs> Finally done. I can say that was perhaps the most interesting event I saw that night, but that one was great too. So that is a reference audio that I generated with uh, the model and I'm using it as the reference speech. So we can say something, we can do something like, ha 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 ha. And then now it'll add laughter in the beginning. So let's see here. <laughs> Don't be freaking stupid. This code is absolute trash. You'd have been better off having a monkey smash their heads against the keyboard and a better program would have come out instead. What a waste of time. So there you go. You got a little bit of laughter in the beginning there. So just working currently on trying to craft a, a voice model that might fit uh, kind of how the, you know, you know, VTuber should sound. And, and I'll see how far I can get along in here. But um, yeah, working with GPT Soviets right now. And then just some other things, um, like I said, I used GPT, uh, chat GPT to just create that GUI real quick for with a whisper demonstration. Um, some other things that are interesting, very interesting. DeepSeek R1 uh, was released. I know some videos have been coming out about it. Uh, lots of Reddit posts, lots of people in the AI community talking about DeepSeek R1, which is a competitor to chat GPT or, or OpenAI's O1 model. And I'm very excited to see that local models are starting to get closer and closer to the proprietary O1 uh, closed source models. So as you can see in the benchmarks here in the charts, we've got DeepSeek R1 basically coming out ahead over O1 in, in several of these um, benchmarks. And I have yet to try this myself, so I want to see how well it does on some of the coding um, stuff that I needed to. And I'd love to switch to a local so uh, to a local model eventually. Now I believe they lo they uh, open source like a six hundred billion parameter model. Yeah, six hundred eighty five billion parameters. That is huge. <laughs> I, I, you would need a lot of uh, GPUs for that to fit on. But they also have like other ones. Um, like I think they have a thirty billion parameter one, a seven billion parameter one. I'll have to take a look, but we'll get this one up and running sometime in the future just to kind of check it out and see um, see how that works. So excited to see that. And then um, and then some other things I've been looking at. So one thing is uh, Cosmos, which is from NVIDIA, which is a world model for um, physical AI. So they want to build, they want to make it easier for the people that are training physical AI to build data sets to train their models on. They want to make that easier for developers. So for you and I who aren't training robots, it might not be as useful, but you can also still use this for just text to video or image to video. And it does pretty well for that. So um, yeah, I was testing it out. I'll have a full video coming out on NVIDIA Cosmos. So uh, we'll be taking a look at that in the future. But yeah, you've got like examples like this. You got like a robot walking through a warehouse. Um, they've got a bunch of other cool, interesting examples you can see on their uh, GPU free preview. So this is kind of like their NIMS slash uh, blueprints page. So you can take a look at them here for free online. Um, and so yeah, I was looking at Cosmos. And then I was looking at Tencent's Hunyuan video uh, because this one is also another video inference model that you can run locally. And this one allows you to create text to video. So I've seen some pretty interesting things come out of uh, this one. And um, it looks very fantastic. Like the local models are starting to catch up or are already at the level of like Sora. And so I find that is crazy. We are now running these things locally. They do take a lot of time to run. I, um, I, in my experience with NVIDIA Cosmos, it takes uh, anywhere between 5 to 20 minutes for a generation. 
Um, and then I haven't exactly run Hunyuan yet, but I have it in my comfy UI um, interface and I just need to click the start queue. So uh, yeah, we'll get that going. And then here is just an example from NVIDIA Cosmos. I probably should have played this a little bit earlier, but um, we've got a fox here on ice. Now this is just one artifact of the model. Uh, the, the fox kind of spawns out of nowhere here. But you can see it accurately starts slipping on the ice. So that is very um, neat to see. Uh, but yeah, in my generation, I had a little bit of artifacting here. As you can see, uh, it hallucinates a fox into existence. But if you take a look at like uh, this comfy UI uh, demonstration video, this one comes out much more accurate. So this is another sample video from uh, Cosmos. But yeah, a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in all different domains that I'm interested in right now. It's it's pretty crazy. You've got LLMs, you've got video LLMs, um, you got TTS speech LLMs, and then audiobook. So yeah, are there anything you guys have been particularly interested in recently? If there are, let me know down below in the comments, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read through some of those. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, I'd like to thank all the members for supporting the channel, and I very much appreciate it. So I'll see you guys later.